Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. For those who are new here, my name is Elenia and this is Soft Skill Atelier where I teach you all the skills you need to bring your fashion ideas to life from concept to completion. You might remember a few tutorials back, I have made a skirt pattern drafting tutorial where I used my own body measurements to make a skirt pattern. On this video, I am using that skirt pattern to make myself a mini skirt. If you want to sew along with me, I highly recommend you to also also check out that skirt pattern drafting tutorial so you can make your own customized skirt pattern. I link the video in the description below and up here. Obviously you can also use any other basic skirt pattern. This is a very straightforward tutorial that makes it easy for you to sew along with me. That's why I show you now all the tools and materials we need to make that skirt from beginning to end. So let's get started. Fabric. I got my green fabric from the remnant table at the fabric store. It was a bit more than a meter and for a mini skirt that's plenty of fabric. Then you need a seam zipper. I recommend a length around 18 cm and the sewing yarn. For the waistband we need a bit of fusible. Of course some scissors for fabrics and paper. A pencil and a fabric marker, some paper tape and pins and a set square and these tiny hooks and I almost forgot some pattern paper. The thinner the better. I use this silky wrapping paper because it's perfect to copy a pattern. I wanted to make some alterations and additions to the pattern before I cut out the fabric. First, I will be working only on the front pattern. I want to add an extra seam to the front part of each side, right where the dart is positioned. Through the extra seam, we will get rid of the dart at the front and gain the opportunity to have two slits on the hemline of the skirt. Just follow me on this. Draw a vertical line from the end of the dart all the way down to the hemline. Make sure the line is in a 90 degree angle to the hip line and to the hemline. After you have drawn that line, I take the transparent pattern paper and lay it on top of the pattern. I start by tracing the side part first. Then move the skirt pattern a bit to the side and draw the middle part. I do this so now I can add the seam allowance all the way around directly on the new pattern pieces. If you have no idea what I mean by seam allowance, please don't hesitate and watch my video about different seams. After that, I remove the original pattern from underneath the transparent paper and add the 1 cm seam allowance all the way around except on the center front of the skirt. That's where we won't have a seam, but instead we cut out that pattern piece right on the fold of the fabric. On the bottom, I added two precautionary centimeters to make sure the skirt won't be too short by accident, but also to hem the skirt in the end. After adding the seam allowance and the hem allowance, I drew the pattern of the facing into the skirt pattern. This skirt won't have a waistband but a direct facing on the waistline. I decided the facing should be 5 cm deep. I'm using the parallel guidelines from the set square to translate the waistline rounds on the end of the facing 5 cm further down. I mark the area with the word facing so I know later why I put my lines there. I do the same thing to the back pattern, drawing the line always just to the dart leg. Now I take again some of that transparent paper and start copying the facing pieces out of the skirt pattern. Make sure you mark what is front and back. Because this stuff can get confusing, I promise. Then move the transparent paper so that the dart line lines up with the other side of the dart. For the facing, we pretend the dots don't exist and we just make one piece out of two. 
Do the same thing with the front part facing. Then put the facing pattern away for a moment. And cut out the skirt pattern piece. I added a seam allowance of 1 cm on the sides and on top of the facing. The front piece doesn't need a seam allowance in the center front because this piece will be cut out on the fold of the fabric afterwards. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will just understand it in a bit. And then cut the facing pattern pieces out. Now I have all the pattern pieces ready that I need in order to make my skirt. So I have no time to waste and prepare the fabric for the skirt by unfolding my pre-ironed fabric. My fabric has a bit of a stretch but not too much. You can see that it is a bit more flexible in one direction. That's the direction you want to have for the width of the skirt and not the length. The little stretch makes the skirt more snug around your body while wearing it. The fabric needs to be folded once along the stretchier direction. The back skirt part, that is still the original pattern piece, does not have a seam allowance added yet. So I need to add that one on the fabric before cutting it out. The dart point also needs to be marked by marking a little hole into the pattern and push the fabric marker through. I make some additional marks for where the facing and the dart legs begin and where the zipper will end. All the other pieces have the right seam allowance already included in the pattern. The front middle part of the skirt will be placed on the fold. The side part right next to it. Again, also the front middle part of the facing will be placed on the fold. That is why this also doesn't have a seam allowance at the front. Before I cut the fabric, I pin the pieces onto the fabric to make sure nothing moves. And then I cut these pieces. After cutting them out, I will make little marks by snipping into the seam allowance where I previously made a mark with the pen so that the marks are also visible on the other side of the fabric. For the dart point, I pin a pin through the fabric and turn the whole piece around and make a new mark with the fabric marker on this side too, on the exact point where the pin comes out of the fabric. For the facing, I need an extra lining to make the lining more firm. This is an iron-on lining with tiny glue dots on one side of the fabric. These melt when you heat them up, so you can fuse them together with the fabric as an extra layer. I iron them on a protective surface, so that the excess glue will not end up on the iron board. Now, before the cut-out pieces are sewn together, I need to make sure that the edges will not fray. So I will frame them all with a stitch that resembles an overlock stitch. If you have an overlocker, feel free to use that one instead. It will take a while to frame all the pieces, but I promise you it is worth it. As soon as all the edges are framed, I start with sewing in the darts. I complete the marks by connecting the two upper marks with that point in the middle of the skirt with a fabric marker. Make an extra line from the dart point to the middle of the dart on the waistline. Now I fold the darts on the middle line and secure it with pins. Make sure the two dart leg lines are laying exactly on top of each other. Now I sew along the dart legs, starting from the waistline ending at the dart point. You can immediately see how the dart has created a bit of a three-dimensionality to the fabric. Next, I sew together the back seam. But remember, that's where the zipper eventually will be. So the mark I put in where the end of the zipper will be is important now. I will sew the seam in two different stitch lengths. The part where the zipper will come in, I will sew with a very large straight stitch. The lower part with a normal stitch around 2.5 mm. I turn the stitch to the largest possible stitch my machine can make and start sewing from the top. When I arrive at said mark, I change the stitch length to 2.5 and I go a few stitches backward and forward to secure the seam. Then I sew till the end of the seam. You can really see the difference of the stitch length. 
Next, I press that seam allowance apart with the iron. It's time to attach the zipper. For that, I lay it on top of the iron seam allowance, the zipper bolt facing towards the fabric. I attach each side of the zipper to one of the seam allowance sides with pins. Before I sew the zipper on, I need to change the sewing foot to one that's meant to sew in zippers. It's narrow and makes it possible to get more close to the zipper. I sew as close as possible next to the zipper on both sides. As soon as I arrive in front of the zipper boat, I lift the foot up and open the zipper so you can sew the end without hitting the boat. When both sides are sewn on, we'll still have the seam closed in front of the zipper. Now it's time to unsew these large stitches we sewed before. They were only meant to keep everything in place. And this is how a very neat zipper gets sewn into a seam. Next, I am heading to the front pieces. They need to get assembled on the two seams that I have created before out of the darts. They will be simply sewn together with a straight stitch, but I don't want to sew them all the way down to the end. I want to keep little slits on the end of both seams. So I am marking my preferred slit length on both sides. I only sew to my marked length and secure the seam with a back stitch. Can you also see the skirt slowly coming together? Now it's ironing time and I need to press also these seams apart. After pressing, I am stitching down the seam allowance right and left next to the seam that gives the skirt a special aesthetic. Plus, it tucks away the seam allowance where the slits are opening up. Because it looks so pretty on the front seam, I decided to also top stitch the darts. I fold them towards the outside and secure them with the same top stitch than the front seams. Now it's finally time to sew the front and back together. This all happens with a straight stitch all the way down to the hem. This is the moment of truth. I am trying on the skirt for the first time. I must say I'm pretty happy about how the fit turned out so far. It seems there is a bit too much access fabric around the waist and a bit too much curve at the hip. What also bothers me is the length. I said in the description of this video that I will make a mini skirt and this is a tiny bit too long to be called a mini skirt. I fold back what is too much and pin it on. Back to work. I'm altering my side seam so that the hip curve and the waist circumference gets a bit reduced and sew the new seam line. I'm making this freehand. I'm just making sure that I'm taking away the same amount of fabric on both sides. I sew the new line and then carefully remove the old seam. Now that this is done, I'm focusing on a hemline that needs to be folded a preferred length. I only fold up one part and the rest I fold up while ironing. I'm just lining them up with the first part. I Let the skirt rest for a bit and focus at the facing pieces. They need to be sewn together at the side seam. And then the facing needs to be sewn on at the waistline. They need to be pinned on with a lot of pins so the facing sits at the right place before I sew it on starting on the sides behind the zipper. After sewing the facing on, I cut off the corners to make it less stuffy when they are flipped around. The lining also needs an extra press. To stay in place, I sew another top stitch at the top of the waistline. To make sure the zipper stays shut while I'm wearing the skirt, I hand sew on a little hook. As a final task, I blind stitch the hem so that the hem has no additional seam visible from the outside. This is also a hand sewing task. While finishing up the seam, I can't wait to finally presenting you the final skirt. And here it is. I'm loving it so much and I think it's the perfect splash of color I can freshen up my wardrobe with.
Thanks for watching my video. I hope you could learn something from it and I hope you liked it. If you have been sewing along with me, I am more than happy to see results. You can tag me in your socials or send me a DM. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and leave a comment and a like here from me. I see you next time. Bye!